Hey everyone, welcome to Screenwriting Tips. My name is Tony D and today we're going to talk a little bit about the pitch. Uh, what is the pitch? Well, look, the pitch sort of encompasses a lot of little things. It's basically how do you sell your screenplay, uh, how do you sort of start selling it, and it all comes back to your pitch. Like how can you describe the screenplay in a short, succinct way so somebody will be interested in buying it and re or first reading it and then buying it. So uh, it all starts with the pitch, uh, which is really the log line. They also call it the log line. And what that is, is one sentence to describe your screenplay. I know your writing is so amazing. The screenplay is so complicated. You couldn't possibly encompass it in one sentence. Yes, I know, but you have to do it anyway. Um, the way you do it is you you just you just paint it in the broadest stroke possible, right? So, you know, what's a complicated movie you like? Let's think. So you, you talk about uh, uh, The Godfather. The Godfather, in a sentence, it's about the trials and tribulations of the Corleone Mafia family. Now, does that encompass everything that happens in the screenplay? Of course not. But some of what happened in the Godfather movie didn't happen until the movie was being made. So you can't put things in your pitch like who you want to star in it. That's not, that's not appropriate. You don't have that kind of power. If you did, you wouldn't have to pitch it. So you need to just come up with one sentence that just hits the genre, what the movie, what the damn movie's about. That's it. You also want to include the tiny little element that's different from other movies. Okay? So if you have a movie like, I was just talking about vampires in the previous video, a movie like Near Dark, you want to include that it's about hillbilly vampires. That's the two elements you're bringing together. Um, my vampire movie, I sometimes described it as uh, Dracula meets Rush Hour because there's a lot of action in my vampire movie. Now, is that totally accurate? No, it wasn't. It, 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 uh, it has vampires in it and it has cops in it, but it's not really like Dracula. It's not really like Rush Hour in plot. Uh, there's some elements there that are similar and I could go into it in more detail but that's not the purpose of that one sentence pitch that purpose is for somebody to go oh a producer to go oh okay so they're vampires and I've seen that movie Rush Hour that was a big movie they made two sequels to it made a lot of money hmm so that's usually the kind of pitch you want you want something that a producer is going to hear that and go ooh money or ooh, that sounds interesting. Or ooh, tell me more. It's it's to entice people. Now you don't want to make your pitch a question. A lot of people do that. And it's very annoying. <laughs> and you shouldn't do that. Don't put questions in your synopsis or your 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 pitch, your log line, whatever. Do not do that. No questions. Keep them out of it. Because you're not enticing anybody with the questions. They need to know. You have to give away the secrets. That's the whole point. Now, you don't necessarily give away the ending. <laughs> you, 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 you say something vague like, well, there's a big twist ending, you know? Uh, or with a twist. You don't say twist ending. You say, this is, uh, oh, I don't know. You say it's Citizen Kane with a twist. So maybe you have a Citizen Kane movie that's both Citizen Kane and Tales from the Crypt. I don't know. I'm just making things up. So the log line or the pitch, one sentence. Then you get to the synopsis. A synopsis is one paragraph, maybe three sentences, four tops. You don't want to get too long with it. That's your short synopsis. So 
it depends on what the producer wants. It depends on, you know, producers will ask for different things. Sometimes they ask for log lines. Sometimes they ask for a synopsis, give them a little more than one sentence. Sometimes they'll ask, very rarely now, thank God, they'll ask for what's called a treatment. Treatment is a longer synopsis. Maybe it's a page, usually it's a one page treatment. Sometimes it could be like a 10 page treatment. I hate writing treatments, I think they're useless. I think if you're gonna read a 10 page treatment, you might as well read the damn script. But uh, there was a problem, I think it was a problem in Hollywood for a while. There were people who were good at writing treatments and terrible at writing scripts and vice versa. So I don't think a treatment gets you where you want to be. I think if you're a producer or a director, you should be able to read a screenplay and start to visualize it. If you can't do that, do us all a favor, get out of the movie industry because that's your job and that's what you should be able to do. I know screenplays are hard to read, but if you're not reading them, then you're not in the movie industry. Simple as that. Read the damn script. Uh, it, it, you know, as a screenwriter, it often infuriated me how great lengths that producers would go to not read anything. I knew a producer, he got sent treatments, they were too long. He'd have his assistant go down to one page, too long. Went back, his assistants went down to synopsis, one paragraph, too long. Knocked it down to a sentence apiece still didn't read them. So these are, when you, when you get caught up with a producer like that, the guys are too lazy. They're just too lazy. They don't read anything. Uh, they're, they're just money grubbing guys running around Hollywood. And there are a lot of those guys. You know, if they smell money, they just want to have their hand in it in case something happens. That's it. It's the only reason they're there. And there are plenty of guys like that in LA. They're not all like that, of course, but uh, if they smell money on you. But that, you should be so lucky if they smell money on you. What you need to do is find people who are interested in your work and then pitch to them the way they want to be pitched. Now some guys are very Hollywood. They like these, no, no, I need a log line. I need a synopsis. I need a treatment. They're very traditional in that way. Some guys are like that. Other guys are more artsy. They don't want to know that. They want to know your influences. They want to know everything but the script. Other guys want to say, send me the first five pages. Send me the first three pages. Send me the first 10 pages. And they want to see the actual script. And if it hooks them, you're off and running. So there's different ways to attack it. But what you're going to need, without a doubt, is a one sentence pitch. A log line, one sentence, a tagline. A ta tagline is often different from the from the log line or the or, or pitch. Okay, I like to put taglines in. I think they're fun. I think they're fun to do. Uh, I would hope that if one of my movies got made where I wrote a tagline for it, at the very least, the producer would, you know, throw that to the marketing people and say, here. Um, I wrote taglines for the movies I got produced. That, those were work for hire situations. I was asked to write them, right? The producer came back to me at some point and said, you know, we need, uh, we need a one sentence pitch for, I think it was for the video cassette box or something at the time or the DVD cover or whatever. And we need a synopsis. So, I, uh, I just wrote them. You know, I, it wasn't the sort of production where I was going to get, I was going to squeeze any money out of it. I don't know, maybe I should have. Certainly on a bigger production, you're going to want to be paid for that. Uh, you should be paid for anything you do, but I was stupid. Um, you need these things anyway, so you might as well write them. You might as well have them prepared. Because when a producer asks you for something, you want to have it ready. Boom, shoot it right to them. Shows that you're prepared, shows that you're a real, real deal. So you should have, if you have a few scripts, make sure you have a, a log line, a synopsis, maybe a tagline. Uh, if you really want to go to town, I would say do a one page treatment. 
I mean, I, you know, ten page. God, I, I, I'd rather shoot myself. They're just, they're just horrible. They're hard to do. It, to me, it's easier to write ninety page screenplay than it is to write ten page treatment. I mean, but that's just me. Maybe it's easy for you. Um, and uh, anything else you can do to sell the movie uh, is helpful too. Back in the day, there was a guy. This wasn't me. Uh, and this was obviously a long time ago where you could do this stuff and not cause a panic, but there was a, a screenwriter who did a spec screenplay. Uh, it was called something like Time Bomb, something like that. Anyhow, he delivered the script with a little fake time bomb on it, which was ticking. Amazingly, that did not cause a panic. <laughs> but this was back in the 80s. It was a joke. You know, it was like, oh, that's cute. Nobody thought, oh, my God, it's a real bomb. They're trying to blow up the studio. Like, people just thought, wow, it was cute. And apparently, he passed that around in a few studios and uh, got optioned. I don't think it ever got made. Um, maybe it did and it was renamed but it was something like Time Bomb but I remember that story and I was just like oh my god um, I had very little luck doing that I, I did have one time I had luck doing some crazy stuff like that uh, it wasn't that crazy but uh, I don't want to go into it as a whole thing but long story short I didn't make I didn't get a sale out of it I got some attention from the producers but in the end, they didn't buy anything because at the time I didn't have an agent. I got an agent out of it who then said, oh, why don't you do more of that stuff? I tried to do more of that stuff and people, people I think, were turned off by it. So I don't do that kind of crazy crap anymore. Also, too, back in the day, you were sending stuff through the mail. So there was more of a, you know, there was more of a thing in the package, so you can't really do that now. Everybody emails, so there's a different time. Back in the day, I wanted to email screenplays. Nobody loved, nobody would read stuff off the internet. I mean, nobody would. Now, everybody does, thank God. Because now, uh, and this is, this is my, I'm really dating myself here, but back in the day, and if you ever have to mail a screenplay, a physical copy, you have to do this, you mail the physical copy, and back in the day it cost two fifty priority mail, and you had to send a self-addressed staff envelope so they could send it back. I had my dad Xeroxing the scripts for free, so rather than put spend the money for self-addressed stamped envelope, I would always put in a note, just destroy the script, I get them for free, but didn't always work. Again, producers don't read. They wouldn't even read the full letter, and then I would get an angry letter back in the script saying, you didn't include the self-addressed stamped envelope. They also had rules about how you had to uh, bind the script. You had to use these these brads, these brass brads with th a three-hole punch, and they only accepted it that way. If you put a different binder, it was like a big deal, blah, blah, blah. Again, thank God for the internet. We don't have to go through that caveman screenplay assembly line that I used to have. I used to literally have a table in my office that was just covered in screenplays ready to be mailed out. And uh, that's uh, that's my dog, by the way, walking around and snorting if you hear that noise. Um, so, come here, John, say hi. I'm gonna wrap this video up. So, if you're, if you're going to sell a screenplay, you want to say, to the producers that you're professional and that you're ready. And that's what writing a pitch, a synopsis, and all these little things that producers like to see. Uh, you know, if you do design, uh, like I have a friend who does costume design, if you're a graphic artist and you're a professional and you can put in a nice cover uh, on your screenplay with the characters or you have you know, you're doing a superhero screenplay and you can put character designs. You know, some sometimes something like that can enhance, enhance uh, people's interest. I used to do little covers for some of my screenplays. I had a screenplay, uh, I still have it, it's called Substitute. It's about a substitute teacher. And so the I had uh, one of my comic book artists 
do a picture of uh, the character's face uh, on an apple. And that was, uh, you know, and then it was substitute. So I had uh, for, uh, I have a screenplay called Lottery Jack about a guy who wins the lottery. And uh, so I have the word Lottery Jack written in numbers across the page. So not, you know, little tiny numbers that make a big letter kind of thing. So it just gives it a little more something that maybe the producer's going to remember it if he actually gets the screenplay in his hand. Uh, so for now, these days, you would send that in a file and hopefully the little cover might, you know, make them remember you. Anything to be remembered is probably going to help you as long as it's something positive. Um, back in the day, I knew a producer, she would uh, bake cookies and send the cookies with, with the script to the producer. And that would help smooth the way. Sometimes she, you know, get great responses. At least they would feel obligated to send her a note and thank her for the cookies, even if they didn't like the script. So, come on, doggy. Come on, say hi. Yeah, there she is. All right. So, little Joan of Arc. You can see what her haircut now. Uh, my name is Tony D. You can check me out on Patreon. You can check me out uh, at the Web Comic Factory in Superfret to see my comics. Also, these videos are now on BitChute and Daily Motion. That's it for screenwriting tips. It's all I can think of right now. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comments section. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover on screenplay tips or a screenwriter's rant or a screenwriter's take, uh, please let me know. We will see you next time.